and regime devotees. It's my pleasure to spend a few moments with you here today. I'm now going to make a speech. I'm on the way to meet the Guyanese diaspora because when we come here, we want to keep them engaged as to what's happening at home. We want to trace the development and the challenges that our country currently face and we want to get them involved. So this afternoon, I'll speak extensively about that and I'm sure I'm going to see some of you there. Um, for those of you who have followed what has happened, we have had a very turbulent history and that's one of the reasons why many of our people had to seek their fortune elsewhere. We lost our freedom for a very long time and we had to wage a struggle almost three decades to regain that freedom. And just recently, we had another challenge to that freedom. And again, this generation had to rise up to the challenge and fight off the forces that wanted to take us back into the past. We've struggled economically throughout history because of bad policies by government. It was man-made difficulty. And um, we have had a hard time overcoming that, and our country has progressed. And just recently, many of you know that because of the discovery of oil now, it has given a great impetus to our national development plans. So, you know, in the past couple of years, we've had the highest growth rate of any country in the world, 6 to 2%, 36%. Our per capita GDP by uh, 2027 would be higher than that of the United Arab Emirates and, um, and, and the highest in Latin America. But we just can't, but that's just the well creation aspect. How we translate this into benefits for the people is the task of the current government. And that is why we have embarked upon a, a long before a need of our people, which is to get world-class education, world-class healthcare. In, in three years, we have 50,000 people on scholarships, Guyanese on scholarships, all paid for by the government. Next year, university education in Guyana will be free. This year, we are um, we're writing off $18 billion of student loans. We believe that education, educating our people, giving them the best opportunities in the world will allow them to prosper wherever they live. And a lot of students here too, I, I know people from Afghanistan's origin in Canada, are now accessing those free scholarships because they can do so online, paid for fully by the government of Ghana. We are now building 12 new hospitals, and in a country that's small, we, we are bigger than the United Kingdom, but we have a population that is less than a million people. So, building 12 new hospitals of an international standard in a single year, or in a, starting now, will allow our healthcare to catapult to a world's world standard. Um, these are just some of the things that are happening at home. Uh, I don't want to get into that today. We're here in, um, in Amandir, and I'm so proud that the Guyanese family has built this Mandir. Uh, it's so good to see how our people retain their culture and their religion. When people came from India to Guyana, they were, under, they were under assault by the colonial authorities. In many ways, other groups lost their culture because it was a deliberate act of the colonial rulers. In Ghana, as late as the 50s, if you were Hindu or Muslim, you couldn't get a job in the public service. You had to convert to Christianity. And um, our party, led that fight to retain people's culture. 
We were the first political party that was formed in Ghana in the 1950s, led by Chinese Dagan. Um, and we, throughout the difficult times, we managed to preserve our culture, discreet religion, Hinduism. And it's good to see that people who transplanted here to Canada, they too have upkept um, their, their work at heart to upkeep this great culture and religion. So we were extremely proud of that. Um, I don't want to make a speech, I guess the politicians said to make speeches. Just to say I'm happy to be here, happy to share this moment with all of you. And please continue to do the good work that you do. Thank you.